Hey, what's up YouTube, Facebook, all you peoples, hope you guys are doing well. Um, so I'm, I'm still out here in the tent and we've had some pretty strong storms come through. Uh, a little bit of mixture from uh, moisture from the south coming up and uh, we've got uh, a little bit of churning from uh, Tropical Storm Arthur out on the coast. So. I woke up after taking a small nap. I didn't sleep well last night. Um, wind and rain uh, kept me up most of the night, which is fine, but took a small nap and woke up to puddles. And everybody loves some puddles, don't we? Uh, no, not, not inside the tent. Um, so I've had uh, the afternoon, I've been cleaning up some puddles and I had to take in some of the books that I had out here. Uh, the humidity was starting to make the pages kind of wrinkle a little bit and obviously I want to I want to keep those safe so definitely something that I, I've been keeping track of because of the the storms that have come through and like I said it's been a lot of rain the front yard is completely flooded uh, you know there's a lot of um, a lot of a lot of water I mean so much water but we all have storms don't we we all have storms that we face in life and uh, while many of us, uh, myself included, I love to sit on a porch or sit somewhere and, and watch the rain and watch the storm and uh, the thunder and the lightning. I, I absolutely love storms. But for some people, storms can be terrifying. Uh, for some people, storms uh, can be the, the signifier of death. Um, and we see that in, in Matthew 14 where the disciples have been told by Jesus to go out onto the boat and meet me on the other side of the coast. So Jesus says, I'm gonna go do my thing. I'm gonna go up in the mountains and I'm gonna pray. So uh, Jesus says in Matthew 14, 22 through 33, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd and after he dismissed them he went up to the mountainside by himself to pray later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it so here they are out on the water and down where they are uh, probably in the Sea of Galilee storms can pop up very quickly uh, storms there can be very very dangerous and it's not like uh, it's not like we're out on some yacht uh, you know doing our thing and a little bit of a storm comes up and we get a little rocky you know it's not that these guys are what we probably wouldn't even consider a boat it's probably more like a, a, a raft uh, maybe a little bit of a, a dugout canoe um, but certainly not very sturdy um, in fact, most don't even travel out onto the water when there's storms. Uh, we see that later in Acts. There's a, a season when uh, Paul has been taken prisoner and he's being transported to Rome. And he is saying, we don't need to be going out there right now. And the, the captain of the ship says, no, nah, we'll be fine. It's storm season, but we can make it. It's okay. And what happens? They get stranded and they nearly die. Um, storms for some people are death. But, how do we manage the storm? Okay, let's continue on. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw he was walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus said immediately to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat. Good for you, Peter, good for you. Walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. 
So a few things. Uh, one, kudos, Peter. You actually had the courage to get out of the boat. In the middle of a storm, in the middle of the night, you get out of the boat and you say, oh, there's some water here and I'm gonna die. No, he said, I'm gonna, I trust you. You said to come to you, I'm gonna come to you and it's gonna be fine. But we all in life take our eyes off Christ. And when we take our eyes off Christ, that's when things really go wrong. So, a couple things. Jesus told them specifically, go. I will meet you on the other side. Now, Jesus set them up. He knew there was going to be a storm. He knew what was going to transpire. That's a lesson for us. Jesus knew the storm was going to come. And yet he sent them anyway. He knew the storm was going to come. Just like he knows and just like he has told us, all of us, through scripture, y'all are going to face some troubles. Y'all are going to have some hard times. But fear not, he says, because I have overcome the world. Fear not. And it wasn't the fact that Jesus wasn't rebuking Peter for stepping out of the boat. He rebuked Peter for taking his eyes off the prize. He took his eyes off the ball, swinging a miss. It's what happens when we lose focus. We know that the storms are going to come. We know that we have to prepare for them. I knew that this tent would hold in the wind. But there was some leaks. Well, what do we do when, when it's leaking? Do I abandon ship? No. Of course not. As soon as all this is done, I'll go over, I'll spray some seals with some waterproofing, I'll take the top off on a day I know it's not going to rain, I'll lay it out, I'll spray the seals, make sure uh, they're waterproofed really well, and I'll fix my boat or my tent. We know that the storms are going to come. It's not about if they come, it's when they come. How are we handling it? Are we handling it like Peter, where we take our eyes off of Christ and we say, oh, I'm going to die? I'm going to sink in the water? No. But here's the other thing that Peter did. Peter grabbed Jesus' hand. Peter had faith that Jesus would save him sinking in the water. When we're out in the storm and we're sinking, do we reach for the Lord to save us? What do we do when the storms come? Do we panic? Do we flash? Flash all over the place. Rah! Or do we say, okay, God, come get me. Help me out. What do you want me to do? And sometimes God's going to say, swim towards the boat. Sometimes it's going to be, you can touch the bottom. Stand up. Sometimes it's going to be swim to shore. Sometimes it's going to be, how long can you wade water? You just need to wade some water for a little while. How long can you wade water? If we're out in the middle of the storm, we need to learn to wade the water for as long as it takes for Jesus to be there for us. We need to listen to what God is telling us. Sometimes it's going to be, you need to swim back to the boat. Sometimes the help we need is going to be sent by Jesus to help us. Do we slap their hand away? What are we doing to prepare? Are we learning scripture? Are we, are we studying scripture so that way we are prepared for the day that the storm comes? So that way we know how to be uh, ready for it? Scripture tells us to keep scripture in our heart so that we are prepared when the day comes. 
we have so many opportunities to evangelize, to show the world what it really means to be a Christian. But if you as a Christian are sinking every time a storm comes, your faith doesn't mean anything. In the last few weeks, I've had car trouble after car trouble after car trouble. Weird stuff, too. Blowing a water pump? Yeah, it's a water pump. Then the thermostat went, which is weird because the thermostat was replaced two years ago. Thermostat went. And then I saved a pregnant possum. Ah, oh, dang it. There goes my wheel. storms and now I'm in the middle of a literal storm in the tent yeah sure I could pack up and go inside but I'm not done doing what I came out here to do we prepare for the storms by being ready for them and when they do come we are ready for them because we have studied and we have read scripture and we are walking with Jesus Christ and we have Jesus Christ right with us so that way we can extend our hand and we can be saved in Christ Sometimes we just have to wait out the storm. Now, sure, Jesus could easily say, you know what, storm be gone. Maybe the storm does go away. Maybe it doesn't. But we have to have faith and prayer that Jesus knows what he's doing. In all things, we must have faith that we are going to be okay because no matter what happens to us in this life, this isn't the end for us. We Christians know that there is something more, there is something later. And the storms can come every day and you know, you can be out treading water and you, you might get tired. I'm tired. I am, I am tired of the financial burden. I, I, I am tired of dealing with everything. I have applied to jobs, to places I never once thought I would ever apply to jobs. But I have faith that no matter where I am, I will be where I'm supposed to be because I am walking with Christ. And Christ will make best any situation that I am in. He showed the disciples the true power of God, or at least some of the power of God. Walking on water. Okay. But also he knew that the storm was going to be there. He also knew that Peter would have a moment of distraction. And he knew Peter would fall. He showed us so many things in that few verses about what it is to walk with Christ in the midst of the storm. He remains in control no matter where we are, no matter how bad the storm. And he reached down and saved him. And then after that, said, poof, storm is gone. He has total control. So if we know that Jesus has total control, and we know that Jesus is with us, why then do we lose faith? Because we're sinful humans and that's the nature of the way things are but it's something that we can work on every day every day we have the opportunity to get into scripture to learn to come closer to Christ so if water starts filling up your boat get a bucket scoop that bad boy out if water starts seeping into your tent Get a couple towels, dry it up. Take care of your boat, take care of your dwelling place, take care of your house. The water is for the outside. And do what you can to keep the sin outside of your life. Do what you can to prevent the attacks from getting in. Walk with Christ and don't lose hope. 
I love In the Eye of the Storm by Ryan Stevenson. It's, it's an amazing song. He remains in control. No matter how bad things get, no matter what you're going through, COVID-19, loss of wages, loss of a job, loss of family members, your own health, no matter what, Jesus Christ is with us. And that is something that should give us immense hope. So when the storms hit, hunker down, ride through them. Be prepared because the storms are going to come. If you guys like this video, please uh, drop a comment. I love to see some comments. Uh, share it with your friends. Um, if somebody is going through something, maybe share it with them. Uh, let's get the voice of Jesus out there. Let's get scripture out there to those who maybe don't know Christ. Uh, let's do our part to, to get scripture out there from, from this tiny little tent. Let's see if we can get it around the world. We all could use some Jesus right now. Uh, we're all going through something. Everybody is going through something, whether it be a major storm or just a little sprinkle, we're all going through something. But have faith, love one another, be kind to one another, lift up one another. Remember, iron sharpens iron. Men, I encourage you to be men of iron. I encourage you to be men of, of, of lifters, lift people up. Be courageous. Live in Jesus Christ and live as Christ lived for the church and then died for the church. Women, do what you do best. You guys are loving, you guys are nurturing, you guys are the bringer of physical life. Keep doing that, keep doing what you do. Love your peoples. All right, everybody, stay safe, stay dry, except for your hands. Wash those puppies. Keep your paws clean, okay? Love y'all.